Yeah, so I think, you know, one of the dumbest slogans in the history of politics was defund the police. And, uh, you know, every department across the nation, certainly the departments in Democrat-led cities, uh, Greensboro is no different, uh, are suffering from exceptionally high crime rates. And so I come from a law enforcement family background. Uh, I, I know what the issues are with law enforcement uh, departments. I've spoken to all the sheriffs. Uh, I've gotten some uh, endorsements from national candidates, uh, former director of ICE. Uh, the number one thing with our police officers is qualified immunity. Uh, and then we have issues with their retirements and benefits packages and whatnot. Um, we have got to support those who protect us and it starts with qualified immunity. You know, crime is a multifactorial problem, but one of the most important things that we can do is we have to be sure that we have adequate resources for our police officers. That includes adequate funding for good salaries, for good recruitment. The police officers also need to be able to have resources available to them, you know, so that they can perform their job well and they can do community outreach programs. It's so important, you know, to have all of that together for that. And then on the other side is we need to look at our legal system. Besides, you know, the most important part is supporting the police, right? But when we look at our legal system, we need to be sure that we are processing those crimes appropriately and they are, we are giving the appropriate sentences, the appropriate, um, you know, outcome to the court cases so that we don't encourage more crime, that we are decreasing crime instead of, um, like, for instance, having no bail policies or things like that. We need to uh, enforce our laws that we have and the proper punishments for them. Well, you know, I don't know what we would do in Congress. I'm not going to hype speculate on bills that may or may not come before me, but what I do know is that we have a problem of, of the soul. We don't have a device problem. Uh, and I, I look at my wife, who is a mental health therapist, and when she got her license, she, uh, it took about three days for her to have a wait list. And so there's a problem there, uh, and we need to address that. Uh, but I think it starts with, with people, not a device. Well, the first thing you have to do to reduce crime is to support the police. Um, the police are the major deterrent for crime. Um, we also have to look at programs that we can do to help uh, people who are at risk. Uh, we were able to do that in the city of High Point, and uh, while I was mayor of the city of High Point, uh, crime rate dropped by 15% in 2023. We support our police. We uh, use a focused deterrence strategy. I would encourage uh, that strategy to be applied nationwide. I think one of the things that's very important that for members of Congress to focus on is supporting the local law enforcement. Um, I, I think back uh, a lot of the friction when President Obama was president, uh, I believe it started a different trend that the law enforcement did not feel like they were supported as much as they should be on the federal level. The other thing I think it's very important to do is uh, I led an effort and took on uh, Attorney General Eric Holder at the time when many of our local sheriffs, uh, Terry Johnson in Alamance County, B.J. Barnes at the time as well in Guilford County and others were having problems with the whole forfeitures and seizures. Uh, Eric Holder wanted to be able to not allow these forfeits and seizures to be used to be able to fund some of the programs. So one of the things that you do is you look for ways on how you can do so at the federal level. That was one of the ways that we were able to support law enforcement.